And we are recording with the Healing Master Summit, and I'm here with Dr. Sashin Patel. Welcome, and thank you for joining us on the Healing Master Summit. Appreciate it. Ian, it's my pleasure. I've been looking forward to this conversation all week, actually. So I'm excited to share and share the space with you and share this with all the listeners that are joining us. Great to hear. Same here, too. Uh, it's always great speaking with you. And for those that don't know, uh, Sashin is a functional doctor. And, uh, but before that, as he puts, and this is very important, I think, is that first and foremost, you're a father, you're a husband, you're a philanthropist, and then you're a functional medicine practicing coach, and you've had a ton of success. You also do international speaking, you're a best-selling author, and your philosophy is the doctor of the future is the patient. And that's what this Healing Mastery Summit is all about, is giving people the tools to become their own doctor. So this is perfectly in alignment. And uh, you're actively doing whatever it takes to keep people out of the medical system by empowering them through education, self-care, and remapping their mindset. You founded the Living Proof Institute um, as a part of your own personal transformation and now coach practitioners all over the world how to step into their power and save their communities. So you've delivered hundreds of community workshops, um, and you're an advocate for changing the healthcare paradigm, and you're devoting your life to betterment of healthcare for both patients and practitioners. So it sounds like we're in a perfect space. Yeah, we're de definitely in alignment, man. I, <laughs> I love everything that you're doing, and I, I love having that. I love having the ability to have a platform like this to spread the good news that we yeah. can be healthy, that we can be our own doctor. And one thing I do want to say is that when we say the doctor of the future is a patient, you know, that's a whole new paradigm, which requires a whole new thought process. So that doesn't mean that you've got to be the person that's ordering the MRI and the blood work and the lab work and doing all these things, right. because I actually don't feel that that's the future of healthcare. I don't think anyone wants to live in that future. I mean, that type of thinking has got us into the mess that we're in. And it's what we call a hardware approach to healthcare. We need to start looking at the software approach, you know, changing our consciousness around health, not just changing our doctors when it comes time to getting healthy. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because when I was in like the worst condition, I was ordering tests and all these things and I just wasn't even doing it. Like I didn't have the energy and I didn't want it like, so doing it myself was actually very challenging for me. Whereas if you have a coach who's telling you like, this is what you need to do. This is how you're going to get it done. And like, takes you through the process without necessarily relying on, say, the medical system um, and doing it naturally, right? Um, so great. Um, now, we just spoke about a topic that um, I think is very important. And you were asking me, like, who, is, who are we speaking to and where are they on their healing journey? And really, this summit is for, could be for anybody. We have sometimes heal, healers who are going to come on here and actually learn from some of the best people in the world. So we have people who are very advanced, some are beginners. And so what's the difference? If someone comes to you who's a beginner, or maybe they know a little bit about healing, how do you approach them and what, how do you deal with them? Great question, Ian. You know, here, here's what I'll say. I'll say that, and this is what I said before we even got on. So the reality is, is that it's not necessarily, um, whether you're a beginner or you're a black belt or an expert, you know, it's really about the consciousness around the things that you do. So everyone's going to sleep. Let's sleep a little bit deeper. Everyone's going to eat. Let's eat healthier. Let's eat in alignment with who we want to become. Everyone's going to think. Let's think consciously, right? Let's think about ourselves, but let's also think about others. Let's think about the planet. Let's think about the cosmos, right? Let's change the consciousness around the things that we're already doing. And that's the difference between a master uh, and a beginner. It's the label you put on yourself and the consciousness around the things that you're already doing. So the easiest thing po humanly possible and the thing that our creator or however, whatever you believe in, whether you believe in evolution or creation, you know, we have the tools to be healthy. We have the tools uh, to be, live a magnificent life. In fact, that's all we have. Right. Yeah. And so what people need to start realizing is that the body, there's nothing that can heal your body better than it can heal itself. And if we provide the right messaging, if 
we provide the right environment, if we provide the right nutrition, if we provide the right you know, software uh, to our amazing cells, then healing happens instantaneously. You know, Da Vinci said this, uh, Steve Jobs echoed this, and I'll echo it, and that is that the greatest sign of sophistication is simplicity. So it begs the question, what's more sophisticated than the human body? Nothing that I can think of. So therefore, what should be, what would be more simple to take care of? You know, if we had to match the complexity of the body uh, to live our best life, our body would kind of be kind of crappy, right? That wouldn't be that cool. That would be kind of poor design, right? right. What, makes the, what makes the body such an amazing thing is the intelligent design to it, the simplicity of what it takes to be healthy. Now, I believe that we've complicated health because we're trying to scientifically match its complexity and understand every nuance and every cook, um, you know, nook and cranny of the body. But that's what Bruce Lipton calls the cosmic joke. It's not our job to understand it, right? right? It's like when you drive your car, it's not your job to understand all the nooks and crannies and all the moving parts and electronics and mechanics in the car. Yeah. It's your job to steer it in the right direction and not hit anyone and follow the directions, you know, on the road and, and the instructions that you're given. So that's really what the next evolution of health is, is understanding that health is a series of decisions and we can start making those decisions immediately. So if we all wanted to go to Disneyland, right, we'd all be starting at different points. But if we keep that final destination in mind and we get on the path, eventually we're going to get there. And when we're on the right path, which is pretty easy to determine, we'll talk about that later, but when you're on the right path, then you can actually run on that path or take a train down that path or take a plane down that path. When you're on the wrong path, then you're a little apprehensive. In fact, the slower, mountains. right? I mean, you know, it's, if you're on the wrong path, you're, you're going to be in trouble. I mean, and time is working against you. And so what I love about our body and what I love about you know, just kind of thinking of this cosmic existence that we have is that when you're on the right path, time is working for you because that path is moving you in the direction you want to go in. But when you're on the wrong path, time is working against you. And so people kind of tiptoe through life on the wrong path mm -hmm. instead of running and, and joyously exploring the correct path. So now uh, that's a great analogy. And I love the analogy of a map. And you put that down there as remapping the mindset, but also using that as a actual destinational map. And um, is this something that you put, like if you coach somebody, are you actually talking about here's where you are, this is where we want to go, and this is how we're going to get there in the easiest, safest, fastest, most effective way? Yeah, that's one of the first things that we talk about is mindset. because. Uh, and there's mathematical ways to prove this. There's, you know, anecdotal ways to prove this. But what we think about actually forges and coagulates into reality, right? So if you have ever read Think and Grow Rich or if you've ever read any personal development work, mm -hmm. you know that our thoughts become things. And again, there's mathematical ways that I could demonstrate this unequivocally proving that our brain actually creates our reality. Right. And and so our thoughts matter so much more than we think. And it's not even just, you know, it's having the thought is one thing, right? So think of a thought like a stop sign on your journey towards going to work. Right. It's the reaction to the stop sign. Yeah. Right. That's the, th that's the part that we need to sometimes figure out is what's triggering me. Am I late? Like, is there some tertiary factor or contributory factor that's triggering me when something comes up in my way? Right. And so it's, it's, it's a, there's a couple layers here that we need to understand. So one is the circumstance and the other one is the response to the circumstance. Mm -hmm. And the next layer to that is what created the, um, the signal to the brain that, that that response is actually appropriate to that stimulus. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people know that they're being triggered, but they don't know why they're being triggered. Right. And and so there's this pattern that keeps showing up in their life and the universe, you know, kind of is always playing these like pranks on us. Right. So the lesson that we need to learn is just constantly showing up in our life. Yeah. And until we learn that lesson or sit back and reflect on what, what am I supposed to learn from this experience? We'll just, it'll just keep showing up for us. And so, you know, life is essentially, you know, in health and it's all connected because until you understand this principle, you'll never be healthy. You know, that's the news flash, right? Like yeah. your lab, your lab work and all that stuff isn't going to clue you into all this stuff. Right. And, 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 
And here's the thing, lab results are a result, right? Yeah. So we're looking at the bottom number, right? Yeah. We got to look at what's contributing, what, 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 you know, what's creating this result, yeah. right? What thought process, what emotional traumas, what triggers, what experiences, you know, what's creating that? Because ultimately that's what determines what food you eat. That's what determines, you know, what time you go to bed. That's what determines hang out with, right? All those determined by what you think and also what you think of yourself. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's beautifully put and powerfully put because no matter what you do, if your mindset's not in the right place, then it doesn't matter. Right. And I, I think I heard you say previously, I don't know if this is the last time you spoke, but um, basically the environment that you're surrounding yourself in, whether it's the cell Right. So if you're, it doesn't matter what you do, right. If you're still keeping the environment and this could be from thoughts because those are triggering chemicals, right? So if the thought chemical around the cell is still the same, the environment actually hasn't changed. Correct. Well, here's the thing here. This might help explain it a little bit better for people who didn't have the privy to that previous conversation. So yeah. a question I would ask anyone is, does buying a new car make you a better driver? Right. Probably not. Right. right. And so, and so uh, buying a new car is the equivalent to you getting new cells. So in fact, every minute, a million cells will die and hopefully a million will replace themselves. Right. And so this is, this is life. You're actually essentially a hologram of cells that are dying and coming into existence constantly. So if we have all these new cells, we should be renewed and healthy in every single moment. And guess what? That is possible to be renewed and healthy in every single moment. But it's not about the cell. It's about the signal that you send to the cell. So right. I could buy a brand new car and drive it off the lot and smash into another car or a brick wall or something if I'm not paying attention because I'm sending the car the signal. And so our emotions essentially create chemistry in our body. And then that chemistry tells the cells uh, where to steer, right? Are we going to steer down stress lane or are we going to steer down, you know, relaxation lane? Yeah. And are we going to go into a fight or flight response or are our organs and systems and cells going to go into a rest and, uh, you know, uh, digest and reproduce type of response. So our emotions are regulating our hormones and our chemistry and our chemistry is essentially a reflection of our emotions. And then that is what drives the machinery, right? So it's the software that controls the machinery. It's the software that controls the hardware. And so most people, they have, when they're seeking health outcomes, what they're doing is they're trying to fix the hardware because that's the model of healthcare that we're stuck in, right? So we run, do scans on people and MRIs, and sometimes the hardware is broken, right? Like I've got a computer sitting here and the screen is broken, so that's a hardware problem, right? right? And as soon as I fix the hardware, the problem is gonna resolve. But if I've got a computer with bad software on it, yeah. fixing the screen is not going to fix what shows up on the screen. Right. So the next layer that people need to really resolve is the software. Because even with bad, with bad software, you're screwed, right? If your hardware doesn't work properly, but you've got amazing software, yeah. then you're going places. Even So think of it like this. If you've got a car that is, you know, it's kind of a beater car you can still get from A to Z, right? But if you're a bad driver or you're following the wrong map, you're never going to get there even in a brand new car. Yeah. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. So when you talk to somebody, do you have tests that analyze like what, like if you have a software issue, it's only going to be the mindset approach that's going to change things, right? Well, here's the thing. Everyone has a software issue including me, right? And including you. Yep. And some of it's going to be conscious and it's going to be something we can discuss and talk about and acknowledge, but yeah. some of it's going to be unconscious. So there's four levels of, of, con of competency and consciousness. So there's unconscious incompetency, which is we don't even know that we don't know. Yep. And then there's conscious incompetency. So we know um, that we don't know, right? Yep. And then you have conscious competency, which is you know that you know, and then there's con in un unconscious competency where you're so good at something that you don't even know it's a skill. Yeah. Right. So there's probably things I know Ian for you that come naturally. Yeah. There's, right. there's things for me that come naturally and people are like, well, how did you do that? And I'm like, what? Right. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, unconscious, uh, com unconscious competency. So yeah. 
One of the things that I learned from one of my coaches, Tim Grover, who also coached Michael Jordan, is that no matter where you're at, there is another level. Okay. Okay. So uh, there's still things, even though you feel like, okay, I'm on top of the world. Well, guess what? Joke's on you. There's another level, yep. right? And then you get there and then there's another level. So it's, and here's the thing, the goal that you set today. So let's say you set a financial goal or a health goal or a weight goal or bench press goal or deadlift goal, whatever it is, right. that goal is based on your limiting beliefs based on who you are today. Gotcha. Right? So what you believe is possible is going to change a year from now. So your goals are going to change, right? So every goal that we set and we move towards, well, guess what? Once you get there, there's another goal, right? There's another destination. There's another, you know, uh, plot on the map that you're going to go to. Yeah. And so life is this constant unflowering and evolution in, in uh, Hindu scripture, we call the thousand petal lotus, right? So it's just this lotus that just keeps flowering yeah. for, forever, right? Into infinitude. And that's what our life is. There's always another level. And, uh, and I think that's a good point because um, if you don't have that next level, then that's where people get lost. And talking about the map, right? Right. A, a lot of people are lost today they don't have a direction or they don't have a destination. And so helping them get to that destination is part of half the battle or figuring out what the destination is. Right. Yeah. And, and here's the thing you'll, you won't know the final destination now, right? Cause you don't even know what awaits you. Right. Right. So the goal is never to plan like, this is my final destination. Yeah. Right. The goal is, okay, what, how can I become the best version of myself and allow uh, the thoughts to become things mm -hmm. and you know, how do I then get myself to think about the right things? Right. And, and doing so, the right things. Right? Well, when you think about the right things, the, you end up doing the right things. Yeah. Right. And he, and here's the thing. I think that, well, I know for a fact that our intention and our consciousness in the things that we do also makes a big difference. So for example, if your doctor says, or your coach, or whoever says, hey, you got to go to bed by nine o'clock, right? And you happily do it because you know, okay, 70 trillion cells are simultaneously going to be healing, and I'm going to be detoxing, and I'm going to be cleaning out my internal systems. My brain is going to get a free oil change as I sleep. If you look at it from that perspective versus like, well, I hate going to bed early. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, and you're miserable about it. Same action, but yeah. different consciousness. Right? A different understanding, a different thought process, a different level of gratitude and awareness around the same task. So some people go through the motions. Yeah. Some people grow through the motions. Yeah. So those are two different things. Yep. And I, I actually, I just had that conversation this week with somebody is how you do something is just as important as what you're doing. Right. And this is the mindset again, right? If you're doing something and you're angry about it, then being happy and looking at the uh, gratitude side of it is much more powerful, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Yeah. It rewire, I mean, gratitude rewires your brain, right? Yeah. And, and so the way we can be grateful is, you know, I think that there's, there's a fine balance be, between being content with who you are, yeah. right? And with uh, wanting more. Yeah. I think it's, we, we should always want more. Right. And we can always expect more of ourselves uh, once we get there. Right. Once we get to that point where, okay, now my, let's say ideal weight or I've got my ideal blood pressure. Well, now what? Right. right? Um, what's next? Yeah. Right? And just like when you go on a vacation somewhere, let's say you've always wanted to go to Greece. It doesn't mean you want to live there. Yeah. Right. Some places are great to visit. Some places are great to experience, but you may not want to live there for the rest of your life. Yeah. So we think of these little goals and, and objectives that we have as vacations. Like, let's get there. Let's enjoy it. Let's be present. Let's take tons of pictures. Let's acknowledge uh, our wins to get us to that point. But then let's now go to that next summit, right? Where do we go? What's that next level? Because, right. you know, a lot of times, like, it, it's really funny because I, I find that some people haven't changed their goals um, for many decades, Right. So if somebody has the same goals today as they were when they were 16, let's say you're 40 and you've had the same goals for 24 years, then what I know is, is that you haven't grown. Right. right. You're, yeah. you, I mean, hopefully you're close to that goal. Right? Yeah. But if the goal is the same, you haven't actually grown yeah. because your goal is going to be constantly shifting yes. as you become a renewed version of yourself. So the way I think about it, just kind of an analogy for people, 
it brings back a memory of my friends and I walking. We went to a dark sky preserve so we could see the stars because we live in Toronto and it's just the sky is just lit up with uh, light pollution. So we went to a dark, uh, uh, dark sky preserve yeah. and there's a forest there. So we're like, oh, let's walk into the forest and see what's up, right? And, you know, we had our cell phone flashlights and you can only see so far. You can only see like 10 feet in front of you. Yeah, so dark. Right? So your goal is like 10 feet. Your goal advances 10 feet. You walk a foot, your goal advances another 10 feet. So the goal is constantly evolving based on how far we can see into the horizon. And that light represents our limiting beliefs, right? right. We can only see as far as our limiting beliefs and our limiting beliefs are based on what we feel we're capable of. But once we accomplish that goal or the steps that go towards that goal, then we can see further up. It's kind of like driving in fog, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, it's, it's like you can't see past where the, where the fog gets really dense, but as you advance, you can see further and further. Right. And that makes total sense. And it's also the, the ideal is the horizon. Like your ideal scenario just keeps moving. And so every time you get closer, it just continues to push out. So your goals change. Yeah. And you know, our friend Dan Sullivan talks about this, the gain and the gap. Yes. And, yeah. and one, you know, one thing that might help people is because I know people who are listening to this, this is not their first rodeo. It's probably not their first time hearing some of these concepts and what they might be challenged with or what they might be struggling with is understanding the neuroscience behind goal accomplishment and how to tap into that. So I actually wrote a, a book, a little novella about this uh, very topic, and I talk about dopamine. So when you have the gain and the gap, so the gain and the gap is essentially what we're talking about is if you're walking um, towards the sun, let's say towards a sunset, towards a horizon, the horizon is just going to keep coming at you. And what people forget to do is they forget to look back and say, wow, this is how far I've come. Okay. Now, sometimes, you know, that's easy kind of to visualize if you're walking and you walk a few miles, you can, you can um, kind of look back and see, okay, this is how far I've come with our emotions. It's a little bit harder to do, right? right? It's not quite as physical. It's more of a visual, but it's not quite physical. And so what I like to do is I like to teach my clients to get things that are anchors in their life and reward themselves. Mm -hmm. So you know, you might have a three-year goal or 25-year goal, whatever the goal is, but there's little wins that you have along the way yeah. that, you know, roads that you have to cross or left turns or right turns that you have to make, so to speak. So, you know, junctures that you have to come through and wins that you have to have in order to move to the next level. And so what I encourage people to do is reward themselves with an anchor. So an anchor would be something that they use every single day or very often that reminds them of that accomplishment. So an example for me would be, I, I travel quite a bit and I know, I know you do as well. So yeah. one of my anchor gifts was nice luggage, right? So that nice luggage is something that I use frequently and it reminds me of my accomplishment. So it's a physical representation. It's essentially a trophy yeah. of, of something. Whereas if I buy myself a nice shirt, I might wear that occasionally, but if right. it's something I use every single day or very often, then it serves as, an, as a trophy or as an anchor and as a reminder of those accomplishments. So, you know, just a, a real simple way for people to, uh, to tap into goal setting a little bit more and feel that sense of accomplishment. So I, one of the things I like is original art. So I'll buy myself, or, you know, pieces of art, uh, carvings or paintings, things like that, that, oh, wow, that, I, awesome. that I, and I set a goal for it. So I, I don't buy anything. Everything I have is based on a goal. Yeah. So um, now in terms of mindset, when we're talking about the like the neuroscientific approach to basically enhancing someone's life, do you ever get into the ego aspect of it? Do you ever talk about the ego? Yeah, that's actually one of the things I wanted to bring up. So for those of you that don't know, I, I know you introduced me as Dr. Sachin, but I actually retired my license uh, a couple of years ago. It was a, it was a 40th birthday gift to myself because when I was young, I, I always wanted to retire when I turned 40. And, uh, you know, I make the majority of, of my income comes from clinics. We have doctors running the clinics, and then I also run a coaching program. So I actually don't need my degree because I'm not providing medical or chiropractic services to people. And, and so one of my visions for a long time, I couldn't wait till I turned 40 because I wanted to retire that thing. Yeah. And, and so that was what I realized in that process. The reason I bring this up is because what I realized in the process is that my title was essentially part of my ego. Mm -hmm. And once I let go of that, then 
I actually had more of a voice because as a, as a licensed uh, healthcare provider, you actually can say certain things and you're not permitted to say certain things. And yeah. so a lot of my colleagues who are licensed still, they won't say the things that I'll say. So it actually allowed me to speak my truth when I got rid of the quote unquote ego or the designation and it took the muzzle off of me. So this is why I know you, I know you and I really resonate on some of the things that uh, I share yeah. and it's, it's because I have nothing to lose. Like it's like Eminem, right? An eight mile, like they, he just like took everything that Clarence could say away from him for those of you that seen the movie. And so there was nothing that people can say. So there's nothing that people can say to me yeah. that says, Hey, well, you shouldn't be saying that. Why? I'm a citizen. Yeah. Right. And so, and that's why I believe that there's the doctor, no repercussions. Well, there's no repercussions. Right. And then you can actually, you know, get people behind your message because you have a very clear message of what you stand for and what you stand against. So, you know, not to make this about me, but I want everyone to know that when we dissolve our egos, then amazing things start happening. You know, our ego is like a little fence around us. Yeah. So it keeps us contained, but it also keeps other people from coming into our life as well. Yes. So, you know, that's one of the big revelations I've had. And there's different ways to get there. I think talking about it, of, of course, and recognizing it is important. But, you know, I would say the fastest way to get there for those of you that are, you know, looking for that would be plant medicines. I think that, you know, plant medicines dissolve our ego kind of, you know, we get to visualize that whole experience and realize that there's a oneness that connects all of us. Now, see, that's a, that's a perfect segue and a topic I, I love to talk about. Now, because uh, when we start to bridge the gap between maybe neuroscience and the ego, so say uh, for people listening, um, we repeat a process and that creates a neural pathway and kind of ingrains that process in our brain as a skill, right? So um, essentially, are we ingraining an ego process into our brain? And then when we take these plant medicines, are they dissolving that? Because they're kind of like a neuro reset. So are they now uh, breaking through that maybe honeycomb effect in the brain and causing it to just reopen? Or, or how is, do you understand the mechanisms? Or are you able to explain how that works? You know, there's probably people that can explain it way better than me. Um, yeah. So for those of you that are watching this, like, you know, you could, you could follow up on other people's work. I certainly think that, you know, Paul Stamets is probably one of the leading experts on, on mushrooms right. and, you know, plant medicines, particularly psilocybin that he's very openly discussing and, and talking about the, the value of it. But one of the things that's really cool is that psilocybin, uh, along with lion, lion's mane, which is another mushroom, can actually increase new uh, neuron growth. So not only are we um, probably hyper connecting the brain. There's lots of research that shows the brain starts hyper connecting with itself. So our problem solving skills become so much better and uh, we birth new ideas and we dissolve these uh, egotistical constructs. Yeah. Um, but you also have new growth and with new growth comes new possibilities. So new ideas, new thoughts. And what I feel that mushrooms really do and figuratively, if you think about them, they grow in the ground or they grow on trees, right? So they're a very grounding earthing type of energy that comes with them. Yeah. And one of the functions of specifically mushrooms is they create a mycelium, which is this, uh, you know, this root structure that runs, through, you know, basically wraps around the entire earth. Yeah. And what that does is it, it creates a cooperative network. So there's no ego, right? right. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. the, so in nature, there is no ego. Now, when we look at things on the surface level, we think one tree is competing with the other tree. And that's how we've been conditioned to think that nature is competitive when in fact, nature is very, very cooperative. Yeah. And, but you got to look below the soil to see that. And so, yeah. you know, I think there's, there's lessons in that, right? The metaphors that nature provides us with, there's a lesson in that metaphor, right? And it, you know, these, you know, nature expresses itself in different ways than words, right? Like that expression of nature, the metaphoric principles of nature have been around for billions of years, right? It's, you know, language is a recent construct when, I, when you think about it from a timeline perspective. Right, definitely. Yeah, so, um, so do you have to, when a client comes to you and they have maybe do you identify it as an ego issue or do you just say that this is where you're at? This is where we're willing to go. Like, I mean, you're not going to say, Hey, I see that uh, I'm going to prescribe you magic mushrooms for your ego issue. Right? So how do you address something like that? Like, for example, 
uh, you know, they use magic mushrooms for cancer patients mm -hmm. and it helps ease their anxiety. And I think part of that is the idea of death um, because it is an identity death or, you know, a social death or even a physical death that they're having it, an issue with, with their ego. So when someone's sick, I think they're in the same scenario. For me, I had to kill off the person that I was mentally because when I got sick, because I was not no longer that person. And so when I entered my healing phase, uh, I had to completely let go of that, but it was making me sick connecting to that ego. So when someone, when you're dealing with somebody in that scenario, how do you get them to recognize this, realize that? A great question. I think it's, I would have an easier time demonstrating it than explaining it. Okay. So one of the things that I listen for when I listen to the words that people use is the words that they use clue me in, into these aspects. They clue right. me into their limiting beliefs. They clue me into, you know, what they think of themselves, what they think of other people, what they think of the world, you know, how they're using language to construct their, you know, existing reality and, and also where their limiting beliefs come from. So a lot of, um, our ego, our sense of ego actually comes from a very young age. So this falls into the unconscious and competency category for people. Yeah. And so that's why listening to and watching how they express themselves clues me in into that. And, you know, I, I don't know where I learned that from. I think it, a lot of it is, you know, just being really present and paying attention closely. And, you know, just like some people, when they see something in writing, they pay close attention to the grammar and punctuation and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, that's not my forte. What I look at is the actual words that that person is using because those words become our world. And our, of course, we don't say things unless we think of them first. So our thoughts become things. Um, but it's the bridge of the word that brings that into reality. So I'm, I'm listening very carefully. I'm paying attention if I'm seeing somebody physically, like I usually do a lot of video calls. So if I'm doing a video call, I'm paying attention carefully uh, to their body language as well. Yeah. And, you know, one way to, to really, um, you know, get good at this is listen more than you talk. I know that I'm probably not doing a good job of that today because this is not a consultation, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when, when it's your time to listen, listen intentfully and listen carefully to the words that people are using. And it'll really clue you in. And, and one thing to remember is that, you know, ego is essentially a mask, mm -hmm. right? So when we have our mask on, we have to behave that way. Yes. And the person that designed that mask is often not us. Right. So we're playing a character that somebody else chose for us. And it might not be the best character suited for us to play. Right. It actually so, might be making them sick. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so now say somebody is, say somebody's here watching this and they're saying, wow, you teach doctors, um, you've been in the trenches for 20 years, um, which is awesome that you retired your, your license, by the way, so congrats. Um, what, what's the first step that they need to take? Like, obviously, mindset is understanding their mindset. But how do they do that at home, sitting at home? <laughs> like, you're it... watching this and they're like, oh, yeah, my mindset. Like, you, they don't even know what it is that's causing them the illness, the thoughts, and they, they're not even conscious. Like, so what, if that person is there, what are they going to do? Well, so success is essentially a number of decisions away. Okay, so if you want to be successful in anything, it's not just the first decision away, it's every decision that comes in alignment after that. So I find that people who are very successful in uh, goal achievement are people who are quick at deciding. Mm -hmm. So you have, to, you have to decide, do I want my best life? Okay. And I can promise you, no matter where you are, you could be listening to this and have $50 million in your bank account. I have clients that are multi-bajillionaires and trust me, they have health issues as well, right? right. You know, I have people that, you know, are janitors and there's nothing wrong with that, right? Yeah. But it's the spectrum, right? The economic spectrum, let's say. And they have similar challenges or they have very unique challenges that they're facing. So the people who can decide for themselves that, hey, I want to live my best life. Um, and no matter where you are, there's a better life available for you. Mm -hmm. okay? And it doesn't just have to be with health. It doesn't just have to be with finances. It could be anything. You right. know, 
here's the thing. I use uh, nature as a metaphor. Nature is my greatest teacher. So I spend a lot of time in the woods. In fact, I've got a wooded area in my backyard. Me and too. Awesome. Yeah. And, and so one of the things that I pay attention to and, and just kind of this, this, this really resonates with a lot of people because uh, if you've ever seen a tree, the tree grows every single day. Yes. Right. If it's raining, the roots grow. If it's sunny, guess what? The leaves grow. Right. So every single day that tree is growing and it doesn't know what it's going to become, but it knows that it has to be the best version of itself and it has to make the most of the resource that it has in any given moment. And it's got to grow every single day. Now think of your, think of you as the trunk of that tree. So you, your healthy, vibrant, conscious, awakened self, and think of everything else in your life as the branches of that tree. So think of your health, think of your relationships, think of your finances, think of your business, think of all the other things that are representative of your life. Those are branches coming off the tree. Now, here's the thing. The branches can never grow bigger than the trunk. And so where people get into trouble and where their health fails or their finances fail is they try to grow the branch bigger than the trunk. And so if nothing else, no matter where you are, you could have a hundred year old oak tree that's has got solid ground. It's not going anywhere, but guess what? It grows every single day still. Yep. It doesn't stop growing because the moment it stops growing is the moment it starts dying. And so it's important for all of us to kind of use that metaphor and realize, Hey, if I want to have better relationships, if I want to have better income, if I want to have better health, no matter what it is, it starts with me becoming a better version of myself. But here's the thing. When you become a better version of yourself, every branch grows right? So that's the paradox, right? You could try to grow one branch and if you grow big enough, it's going to come crumbling down or you could grow every branch simultaneously. So if we just take that as a metaphor and decide that, hey, I'm going to continue to grow. I'm happy with where I'm at or I'm not happy with what I'm at and I know there's a better uh, life for me awaiting me. It's a decision away. So you have to first make that decision. And the next decision that you have to make uh, or thing that you have to kind of realize is not a decision, but a realization that you have to have is that this is a never ending journey. Yeah. You know, people want it to end like, Oh, when, when am I going to be done? Or when am I going to hit the goal? And if, when, once you start talking like that, you don't understand how life works anymore. Yeah. And so you're just like a buffoon essentially trying to like fix this one goal. But the yeah. joke is that that goal is going to change or it's going to evolve and, and it's going to require you to evolve first. Yeah. So I think that once you realize that this is a never ending journey, then you just decide. And, and here's the thing. You can decide that your goal is changing tomorrow because you're a different person tomorrow. You could be right. a different person after listening to this conversation if you choose to be open to that possibility. Yeah. And some people close off that possibility, right? And that's where kind of our ego holds us back a little bit. See, that's a beautiful analogy. And it's funny because I use that in, in a lot of the, in pieces of the book. So for example, the roots, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this graphic. I didn't come up with the idea, um, but it shows the roots of a tree and the roots of the tree have resentment, anger, uh, frustration, irritability, jealousy, and the tree is dead. And then there's another tree and it shows love, happiness, gratitude, appreciation, and the fruits are blooming and the tree is blooming. And yeah. so that's a, a perfect like what explanation you just gave. And it's also directly connected to what we were talking about previously, which is the thoughts and the feelings are literally manifesting your reality. And so um, that's a beautiful full circle kind of takeaway that we just went through there, which is it all comes down to that. And that is the basis. And we're getting down to the root cause of disease correct? You know, absolutely. So everything has a resonant frequency to it. Your worst life and your best life have resonant frequencies to them. And so the thoughts that we have are generating an invisible frequency. We can't see them, right? Because if we could see everything, we would see nothing. If we could hear everything, we would hear nothing. There's certain frequencies that we can see, certain frequencies that we can hear, and it's actually a very narrow bandwidth of what we can see and hear. Yeah. So our senses are, are not hearing the vibration that's taking place in all of the things. Like when something is solid, for example, it has a very, very high vibration to it, right? So that microphone in front of you has a vibrational energy to it. Yeah. And so our thoughts create a vibrational frequency, which then has the ability to then move all of this machinery in the universe 
to bring what we think about most frequently into reality. So here's, here's the reason why people don't accomplish their goals. You want to know why? Yes. All right. So this is, this is going to, this is, this is like the golden nugget of this. So if you, if you take a little clip from this interview, take this one. So here's why people may not accomplish their goals. It's because they're not focused. So when we think about something, there's a frequency to that thought. It's think of it like tuning into a radio station. Yes. If I change the dial on the radio station, which is like changing my thought, now I'm tuned into a different radio station. Right. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, if I'm not, if I'm tuned into a different radio station, there's different information that's coming out of me and different information that's coming out of the radio. Now that means I'm not hearing what's going on over here. Yeah. Right. So I'll never hear the whole song. I'll never see the full TV show if I'm constantly changing the channel. Yeah. And so focus is like staying on that channel so that when we think about something, it's all this machinery is moving and it's bringing this into existence. The moment I start thinking about something else, cause I'm distracted by Facebook or the news or, you know, what my neighbor is doing, then now I'm thinking about something else, which means now I'm bringing this into reality and then yeah. I'm bringing this into reality. And then this, now the original thought, the vision that I had is not even part of my thought anymore. Yeah. So I'm not actually bringing it into existence. So it's the things that we think about obsessively and continuously that will bring into existence. And, and so the greatest way to kind of keep people from their own, having their own personal uprising is by keeping them distracted. And think of a magnifying glass. A magnifying glass, if we're waving it around, it's not going to do anything. Yeah. But on a nice sunny day, if we can keep that thing focused long enough on a piece of paper or a piece of wood, we can burn the whole forest down. Yeah. Right? So it's focus and the intent and also the time, like if we have to be focused for a certain period of time on something, and that's what will bring it into existence. So when people say, well, I tried to think positive, or I tried to do this, well, were you distracted? Because if you're distracted, then everything that you're distracted by is actually coming into existence, and you're actually coagulating into existence with your mind. Yeah. But it's the things that we obsess over that will come to fruition. And here's the other thing, guys and gals, is that you're not always going to know how it's going to happen. You know, most people get really focused on how something is going to happen, but they almost forget about what they're trying to create. And right. so one of the secrets of the mind is actually to focus on what you want, not how you're going to. Right. Because sometimes the right people will come into your life, the right opportunities, the right circumstances will come into your life and you don't even have to solve the problem. Somebody else is going to do it for you. Right. right. So be focused on the outcome, not always on the steps in between creating that outcome and it's going to be amazing to see what happens for many of you if you start applying this and focusing on what you want. Wow. Powerful stuff. So we're almost at the bottom of the hour. And I just kind of want to recap because we did talk a lot about a lot of things. But shifting your making a decision and then recognizing the mindset that is creating the reality that you're living in. So like almost like a projector. Like the frequency is now projecting into your reality based on your thoughts. And you can switch that to your best life, your worst life. It's just now recognizing where you're at, that you're responsible for where you're at, right? Absolutely. And, and that's the thing. Like it's the good, here's the good news and the bad news, right? The good news is it's all in your head. The bad news is that it's all in your head, <laughs> right? Exactly uh, right? But here's the great news. You can actually do something about it. First step is recognizing it, right? Absolutely. I mean, here's the thing. Here's what all of us have to recognize. And I want to, I know I've said this, but I want this to really hit home in is that this is a journey. It's not a destination. So if you view your health and your life as a destination, mm -hmm. then it's not a big deal, guys. Like you can get there where, whatever you want, whatever you think you're capable of, guess what? You're capable of it. That's not the, that's not the, the beauty of all of this, the beauty of all of this is that that's just a stepping stone. And when you get there, then there's something else you're going to flower into someone else that you're going to have to become because uh, it doesn't just end there. Right. Yeah. Like, right. you know, if, if life was just a bunch of goals, then like, what would you do after you tied your shoelace? Yeah. Like if that was your goal at one point, knowing how to tie your shoelace was your goal uh -huh. in life. Right. And then guess what? Once you know how to do that, okay. Your other goals evolve after that. Right. So I've got my life is over. Yeah, <laughs> not my shoes. But this is what happens with, like, for example, Olympic athletes. I mean, it happens with everybody. But they have this goal, like, I'm going to win the gold medal, 
and then they win the gold medal and they think that's the end of the end all be all and then their life is actually in chaos afterwards mm-hmm. right yeah because you know what's next yeah. right but if we go in with the attitude that i'm going to continue to evolve and right. you know and i'm going to ego I'm going to evolve and dissolve, right? So I'm going to continue to evolve and dissolve my ego. Yeah. And, and that's, when, that's when life becomes extremely beautiful. And that's when new opportunities come to us. That's when, you know, our, our unflowering truly takes place. Beautiful. Well, any last words before we end here? This has been really profound. I hope the people that are listening and listen to Sasha, I mean, really, uh, this is high level stuff. Uh, and, and it's also been brought down for, for the people that um, are new to this. And so any last words that you want to tell the viewers, maybe somebody who's there sick, unhealthy, before we end this interview? Well, once again, Ian, I appreciate this opportunity. I want to, I want to thank you for you know, asking such great questions and you know, putting this whole program together because I know where your heart is at. And I just love what you've done. So keep up the great work. I do want to acknowledge you for that. And for those of you that are listening, you know, thank you for, for tuning in and thank you for, you know, supporting this type of work because I truly believe that the next evolution is not human hardware, right? I think there's, there's a, there's going to be a huge tipping point and, you know, a plateau that takes place in evolving human hardware. The next evolution is evolving the human software. And the beautiful thing about software is that software has infinite possibilities, whereas hardware uh, and being stuck in this hardware model of health has very limited possibilities. So, you know, just be open to the beautiful world that uh, is before you be present, be in the moment, you know, but live for the future, live for a beautiful, amazing future. And, you know, make sure that the future that you're trying to bring into reality is something that is near and dear to you, something that you obsess over. It's the things that we have a healthy obsession over that become our reality. And if you're trying to get healthy, then don't focus on sickness. Focus on what it takes to be healthy. And here's the thing. The path to health is very simple. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll end with this. This will take me a few seconds. The path to health is very simple. You know, love, that's the first thing, right? And you got to start by loving yourself. And when you love yourself, only then can you truly love others. Gratitude is extremely important aligning yourself with the circadian biology of this planet. So getting sunlight in the morning, midday, and in the evening, you know, limiting your exposure to artificial light, you know, making sure you're connecting with earth on a daily basis, you know, going for a walk in the woods is plant medicine, right? Plants can help us and, you know, communicate to us in so many different ways. You don't just have to eat them or consume them. We can also submerse ourselves and immerse ourselves amongst them. And, you know, really build loving relationships, like get rid of all the grudges that you might have, you know, realize that the person that hurt you 10 years ago, hopefully has evolved and is a different person now. And certainly you can be a different person. The only place that energy exists is in your own mind. So, you know, letting go of things that are no longer serving us anymore and really trying to look out for each other, you know, from a cooperative perspective, because the world that I know you want to create and the world that I want to create is one where there's peace, there's harmony, there's love, there's acceptance. And all of us are living, you know, our best selves and expressing uh, our best selves. And, and really that's going to take place uh, when all of us are living our best lives. And, you know, I hope this inspires some of you to, you know, become a little bit more conscious of the way you think, which then changes your behaviors, changes your actions, changes your health, changes your community. And, and really your health is, as we mentioned earlier, is not a destination. Your health is a journey because when you do have what you think is quote unquote health, in the future, guess what? There's another level, right? Like when you're out of pain, okay, now what's next? What are you going to do with this beautiful body? Who are you going to help? Who are you going to serve? You know, yeah. there's, a, there's, there's this constant uh, evolution that's going to take place for you. And so be prepared for that beautiful journey ahead. Awesome said. And what you just mentioned is how we change the world, right? Absolutely. It's the only way I know how. So yep. if I can find a better way, uh, in an easier way, then I'll certainly be, you know, shouting it from the rooftops. But this is, I feel, the the best way and really the fastest way and the most affordable way is by changing our mind, yep. right? It can happen instantaneously. Yep. And starting with the individual that's listening to this uh, this recording. So, Sashin, uh, we can find you at Facebook, uh, the Sashin Patel, right? Yep. Facebook.com slash the Sashin Patel. Any other places we can find you or um, get in contact with you? 
Yeah, my favorite place to start is actually at www.30in30.org. So 30in30.org. We've created a free program that teaches you how to stay out of our office and how to you know, take ownership over your health. I give away my 30 best tips that uh, can help you on your healing journey. And these are the things that you want to start checking off of your list. Uh, even if you're seeing a doctor, whether you're seeing a functional medicine doctor or an acupuncturist or a naturopath, whoever you're seeing, this is your checklist, your essentials checklist of the things that you can be doing that hopefully your doctor tells you, but why not start doing them immediately so that you can start getting the benefits from them. So 30and30.org is a great place for people to go to. Awesome. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure and thank you, Sasha Patel. And uh, we will see you next time, hopefully, when there is a next time. Thanks, brother. Have a great day. Thanks, Ashton. Bye. Bye.